This was my thumbnail in the previous anime video, and I think this episode just speaks for itself on that. The beauty of this episode is animators gathering from all over the world and One Piece fans who used to dream on working on the show creating a group effort which allowed the undisputed action masterpiece of One Piece to be born. Episode 1K17 is the best animated episode in One Piece and one of the greatest episodes I have ever watched. I don't even know where to start but this is a dream team putting their all into the episode. This episode is without a doubt the episode with the biggest amount of talented people on it yet on the show and to think it's only one episode apart from 1k and 15 the one piece anime has far exceeded what a weekly anime has ever managed to deliver the episode director is nanami michibata with the help of co-series director kohei kurita michibata is a relatively new upcoming director she worked on episodes like 925 which was sanji versus page one but she also had some average showings like episode 1k and 3 which had some jarring transitions so I was definitely interested in her output in this episode and I think she delivered with the help of many other talents. One of the main reasons one has had such quality is the mentality of supporting young talent and to give them bigger responsibilities to grow even further. Which is why you'll find series directors helping on new directors episodes like the main series director Tatsuya Nagamine on 1006. On the directorial side, this episode is too action-packed to not overshadow that, but the essential elements are all on point, like the OST choice, the pacing control, the use of colors and compositing, etc. One of the main factors of producing good action is a good storyboard. Having so many different people storyboarding various parts could be a risky move. The One Piece anime being this ambitious is exactly why we reach such level of quality. The people who control contributed on the storyboard are the animator Henry Thurl, who storyboarded like 25% of the entire duration of the episode, on the top of delivering minutes of key animation on some of the most complex designs in One Piece. He storyboarded the early parts of the episode and his board managed to put the Supernova trio in a league of their own. Each Supernova had their own sequence before attacking Kaido at the same time. I don't remember Kid's power ever looking this menacing before. Another animator who who contributed to the storyboard is Katsumi Ishizuka. Just like in episode 1K and 4, Ishizuka storyboards the last section of the episode. What makes his storyboard stand out other than the dynamic action is the scale he gives to the battle. You'll often see Kaido and Big Mom looking so high and tiny in the skies, which makes them look more terrifying because of the destruction they are causing. There are two series directors who also contributed to the storyboard alongside Michibata herself. I think they're there's a very short section that was a bit underwhelming compared to the rest of the episode. I still think it's good, but it falls a bit flat sometimes. For example, the framing of this shot could have been a bit better with a more inspired perspective. But other than that, the board has some creative liberties like the straw hats appearing in front of Luffy during Kaido's dialogue. Even the non-action part with the comedic interactions had some creative bits for the storyboard like Luffy reaching the camera each time he bounces up while having a different expression then disappearing when he goes down another thing the board of this episode does is selling how terrifying and destructive like the size of Kaido's slashes or the distant shots of his tornado covering up massive bits of the island the size difference becomes more obvious when the attack is about to reach the characters seeing them looking so small in comparison kind of puts you in how intense their standoff against the two monsters really is now the the meat of the episode is obviously on the animation side. There's one hero who put insane amount of efforts on this episode to the point it's unhealthy. Two young so delivered minutes of fantastic key animation on the top of correcting a lot of cuts on the episode. Without someone as dedicated as him, this episode can't exist. His close-up shots with the thick line art are a treat to watch. His aggressive action handling a lot of gear forth attacks along with his usual amazing effects and background animation is one of the highlights of the episode. One of the pillars of this episode visually is also Henry Thurlow. Him joining the One Piece team is a big win for its quality. Attempting to animate Dragon Kaido is already crazy, but he goes as far as even animating bits of Kid's ability outside of the CGI, giving them such insane detail with layers of shadows, and his intense shading made Kid's ability even better to look at. 
But the French animator does what no human should be able to pull off. Vincent Chansard has worked on One Piece before, delivering scenes such as the warlord abolishment or Neko's attack on Kaido. But his contribution to this episode is something I did not expect to see. He's a big One Piece fan, so you can tell the passion that went through his cuts. He delivered three sequences on the episode, and each one had my jaw on the floor. First one is the supernova trio rushing to attack Kaido. His art and animation on Kaido as he laughs is probably the best I've ever seen on such design. The impact frames on display here are seriously out of this world. I also loved how Onigashima itself blends as Kaido's call in some of these impact frames, which is another thing about Vincent putting a lot of creativity to his work as a fan of the series himself. But this is Vincent's first scene only on the episode. What comes next from him is something that would even make artists get dizzy by looking at what he pulled off. There's a good reason Kid's ability for the most part is CGI, and the two most complex designs on the episode are easily dragging Kaido and Punk Rotten. Vincent, however, decides to animate both in 2D animation along with his dynamic camera movement, and he ends his scenes with yet even more impact frames worthy of being hanged in art museums. Vincent decides to continue even more animating Law's gamma knife from the inside point of view of Kaido's body. The effects work here is insanely complex. It reminded me of something Kichiro Watanabe would do. The camera rotates around Kaido to reach Law and the close-ups are super detailed. The smears are selling Kaido's pain along with the impact. I can keep talking about his insane work but the video won't end that way. Yen BM makes a very quick comeback after 1K15 and delivers one of the best animated Zoro scenes in the anime, something that immediately reminded me of Yutaka Nakamura's work with his smooth way of building up momentum before the impact. Yen continues with phenomenal effects work later on Kaido's blast birth. The little bits of destruction remind me of something Hisashi Mori would do. There are many animators that I won't be able to go through in detail, but I still got so much respect for every single one who contributed to this episode. There's no better way to conclude a One Piece classic without its best action animator going all out. The iconic One Piece animator was responsible for some of the most memorable finishers in One Piece ends this episode with his best work yet. I absolutely adore the smears as Luffy flies towards Kaido. There's a certain level of air pressure on Luffy given the timing unique touches. Luffy stretches from sheer power and speed to almost non-existence. The effects work are very Nakamura inspired. The slow motion after Luffy launches his fist creates anticipation for the earth shattering impact. The brush strokes impact frames and aggressive smears created Luffy's more ferocious attack here in the series. It's funny that I always said I feel my screen's gonna break whenever Ishizuka work on an episode, and this episode ends with Luffy's fists almost breaking the fourth wall, leading up to the ending of the to be continued car. The episode is historic, it's not a sight you'd be able to witness any day. It's up there with the best animated action episodes of all time in my opinion. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll meet again on the second half of the rooftop fight.